welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video, we're going to start a brand new series and we're going to paint a Venetian mask with peacock feathers. If you want to follow along traditionally, in this video I want to showcase watercolor techniques, acrylic, and colored pencil techniques. So this will be sort of a mixed media painting. Now the brushes that I use are 2 inch flat wash, a number 10 bristle brush, a number 8 filbert brush, a number 10 flat brush, a number 6 flat brush, a long script brush, and a short script brush. Now these I mainly use for my acrylic painting, but you can use the softer brushes for watercolor too. I also use canvas board for my acrylic painting. If you're going to use watercolor, probably use Arches cold or hot press paper or any brand that you prefer. Um, you can use watercolor pencils or regular colored pencils and there's tons of different kinds of brands so just pick your favorite brand. And the same with watercolor and gouache. There are tons of different watercolor brands. Now the cheaper ones are probably not as light fast as the more expensive ones are. So it's going to depend on what you want to do with this painting that you're working on. If you want to sell it, then you probably need to find the more expensive light fast brands. If you're just doing it in a journal or something, then the cheaper brands will do well. These are the colors that I use and they're mostly found in Grumbacher Academy colors, but you can find all different color names and different color brands. So the app that we're using is Infinite Painter for Android and I'm just starting out with a little bit of a sketch here. Use graphite. And what I wanted to do was make sort of a, a light wash in the background with watercolor. And I'm using the Lorraine brush in Infinite Painter. And you can just use a splatter technique for this if you're following along traditionally. And just go ahead and pick some light blue colors, light pinks, light purples. We just want sort of a, a textured looking background here. And I'm throwing in um, some sky blue color and some purple and light pink. And I still want sort of the spotty color, but now I'm kind of glazing over that. And so if you would, if you follow along traditionally, you'll probably have to let the layers dry and then go back over them. And then here I'm using darker colors and I'm using the same splattery looking technique here. And you can throw in purples and reds, pinks, use a little bit of a darker purple to give it more of a look there. Um, you can use the Marin brush. I think that's how you pronounce it in Infinite Painter, Marin or Marin. And it, it gives it a nice glazed look. And then here, probably I would use acrylic over the watercolor. You can use acrylics over watercolor. And just go ahead and make the mask and underpaint it and you can use probably a light violet color just something that's not real bright yet we're not ready for real bright colors yet and you can use your number six flat brush just a small brush and then you can use hooker's green for making the little cap part on the top of the mask and also the cloth folds that go behind the head of the mask and you can use yellow ochre for the bottom part of those folds and just go ahead and probably use your acrylic paints for this and also on the mask part here and go ahead and use yellow ochre or kind of a raw sienna color just something to to get the mask design started we just want to sort of put in the shape right now. We're not getting a real refined look here, but we're just trying to get in the general shape of the mask here. And I'm saving this a lot because we're doing beta testing right now on some really new features and we had some crashes. So 
Make sure that you save frequently anyway when you're painting digitally. And here I'm putting in the mouth a little bit and using yellow ochre for it. It's going to be kind of a gold color. And then go ahead and put the collar in with the same color of green as you, you did on the, the folds behind the mask at the top. I'm working on the peacock feathers a little bit. And right now we're just doing underpainting. So I'm using acrylic. I suppose you could also use gouache if you wanted to. It's more of an opaque watercolor. But remember with gouache that it will always activate itself again when you add water on it. But with acrylic it won't. It will dry and you won't have to go back over it again. And then here I was just looking for a brush that would feather out at the end because I'm trying to make um, a feathery look and so I'm going through the controls and just looking to see what I can do here and tweak all the brushes. I'm using the Vince brush and the Leo brush for the feathers so and right here it, it makes a pretty good feathery look and I'm using kind of a, a dark brown or a dark charcoal color not pure black but you can for the eye holes of the mask but for the feathers you kind of want those a dark brown or dark charcoal and then use cadmium orange for the flower that holds the feathers and the ribbons together and you can use burnt sienna on the peacock feathers and I'm trying to make the folds on the cloth there on the mask and you can go ahead and use that darker brown color to also refine the mask. And you can use white. This is why I want to use acrylics is because you need to go back and refine the mask. And so acrylics will go over the top of watercolor and gouache. And I'm using kind of a light yellow color for the mask here. Just uh, bringing up the highlight on the mask a little bit and using the Leo brush for that and just kind of refining the features putting in the shadow under the nose you can use a light gray color for that and use your short script brush when you start working on these details or a round brush and I'm adding some cadmium yellow light to the mask and I'm starting on the design and it's probably a glitter paint that's on the mask so we kind of want broken lines and nothing solid there yet. And just kind of working on adjusting the shape of the eye holes and the mask and adding on the little curly cues and the fancy design on it here. And just using kind of different shades of brown. <laughs> you can add more acrylic gesso to your brown to make it lighter and darker. You can use a raw sienna color or burnt umber. And just kind of work on the underpainting here. We're not getting big details yet. We're just kind of trying to fill in the color. You can use ultramarine blue for the peacock colors and the little beads that hang down from the flowers. And working on the shape of the mouth a little bit here. Just adjusting. This is the stage where you just adjust things. We're not getting into the final detail yet. We just kind of want to get the features and, and the first layer of paint on. And since we're using acrylic, we can go back over it and add layers of paint. That's why it's good to work with watercolor and acrylic. You can just use acrylic and thin it down to where it looks like watercolor, but or you can just use watercolor as the background. And then here I want to go ahead and just keep on adjusting the feather shapes and trying to get it right. And I wanted to work on the folds of the cloth behind the head of the mask. And you can use a dark green here. You don't really want exactly black. You want a dark green. So you can throw in purple and hooker's green together, just trying to get a, a really dark green color here. And I was trying to work on the blending, and I picked the watercolor texture to see if I could make the brushes sort of blend a little bit better here. And I'm just trying to get it to where it will blend together. And so I was working on 
the dilution rate and the mixing. And then I picked the Blackwell brush, which is in the pencil category, to go ahead and sort of use that for the refining of this cloth here and also making the folds. And if you're going to go ahead and switch to a colored pencil, with colored pencil you need to work from light to dark. So you can go ahead and add the dark folds on, of the mask with colored pencil here if you want to. And, and you can throw in some blue. I'm adding a little bit of ultramarine blue on there for the highlights because the fabric's sort of shimmery and it has blue highlights there. So we want to try to show that. And I'm just working on picking a, the best paper texture that I can in Infinite Painter. And then I'm working on trying to make those look golden, the golden folds on the, the headscarf. So this is the end of part one of our peacock mask series. And in part two, we're going to be working more on the mask design and also working on the folds of the cloth. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. And I will catch you later.